Hey guys, it's Russell Tussle, and today we're going to be playing Civilization VI. This is, I love this music. Okay. We're going to do a random leader. Uh, we're going to try King. I've beaten it on Prince. We're going to do online game speed because I'm impatient. I really appreciate the shuffle map. And we're going to do... We're going to do standard because I feel like sometimes huge... It takes way too long for everyone to go. From the first stirrings of life beneath oh, water, to the great beasts of the Stone Age, to man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest, from this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. In your people lies your greatest strength, Emperor Qin Shi Wong. From all over the world, others will come to gaze upon the great walls and towering wonders of your united China. May the hands of your men never blister as they work hard and fast to raise the most impressive structures that the world will ever know. Protect them well, and you will forever be immortalized. I haven't actually been able to play China before. Um, and also that's why there haven't been any videos for like the past two weeks because as soon as this game came out that's where all my free time went uh, so we can use builders charges to complete 50% of wonder cost so that's really cool inspirations give us 60% boost instead of 50 for Eureka's Eureka's and inspirations we have the Crouching Tiger unique land unit, and we can build Great Wall Improvements, which I'm most excited about because the idea of having a giant wall around your cities sounds very good because I always get murdered by people. Um, so typically, I just find my first city wherever it starts me because, oh look, tobacco, I've never even seen that before because uh, typically where it starts your settler is a good place to start. Uh, I have my setting on balance, so usually it is. I don't know about the other settings. Also, I will say I am super impressed by the variety of map in this game, because I keep finding luxury resources every time I start a new game that I've never seen before. So, that's impressive to me. Uh, we're gonna start with a scout. And we have lots of cattle. So we're going to start with animal husbandry. Are we right next to the ocean? Yes! I really appreciate being near the coast. Unless this is the lake. Nope, it's the ocean. Just, well, it depends on who you're playing against. If you're fighting Norway, it's not more defensible. <gasps> really? Already? Reconnaissance units like scouts are unique in that they can gain experience by exploring and discovering parts of the world. I still have all the advisory things on because there's a lot to this game and I quite honestly cannot and probably will not ever remember everything there is to it. How tiny the cows are compared to him. They're like little mini baby cows. Alright, and then next. I think we'll have a builder next. If there are no dogs in heaven, then when I die, I want to go where they went. Also, Every time you research a technology or a policy, Sean Bean's sultry voice narrates it for you, as well as a couple other things. It's just, it's a wonderful addition. <laughs> like this game would, would be that much worse if Sean Bean wasn't narrating everything. Oh, we have a new research, duh. I just said Sean Bean narrated stuff. Uh, we'll do it. So if you click on one that you don't have access to just yet, It'll map out the quickest path to get to it. And so pottery, granaries are nice, but I want irrigation. So I click on irrigation and then it 
It'll auto research whatever it needs to get to irrigation, which I appreciate. I can't remember if it did that in Civ 5 or not. I honestly haven't played Civ 5 in like years, so I don't remember much about the game. Alright, we're gonna try to run after the scout and murder him. Because if you don't kill barbarian scouts, they'll run back to their camp, and then you'll just get attacked by a bunch of barbarians. Also, there's music for each civilization. It doesn't always play the civilization's music when you're playing them, but it does to start. And it's just so appreciated. There's a lot about this game that's just very appreciated. Look, there's the camp he was running back to. Tell all his little friends. I'm gonna fortify you in case you get attacked. Enacting new policies in our government can be of great benefit. Our people await your decree. At his best, man is the noblest of all animals. Separated from law and justice, he is the worst. So we just learned a code of laws. Uh, so I don't think this was really a thing in Civ 5. You have policies that you can have enacted depending on your government. So different governments give you different types of slot. There's like military, mm, I don't know, let's see, what are they? Military, economic, diplomatic, and wild card, which is anything. So red are military, yellow are economic, and green are diplomatic. Uh, and eventually you get to, you know, democracy, communism, and you can be a fascist and have a shit ton of military <laughs> policies. Uh, who am I? I am China. We'll just do Golden Faith in the capital, because we don't have more than one city yet. And then you can change them, your policies, every time you research a new civic, which is this tree, the civic tree. Foreign trade is amazing, so I'm going to research that first. Because when we start meeting other civs, they really appreciate it when you trade with them, for whatever reason. Oh, look. Look at that. It stretched to the... Oh, there's spices over there, too? This is a great starting location, guys. Um, oh, so, like... So luxury resources, resources give your city let's close that, an amenity, uh, which you can get from get or lose from any number of these things. Uh, and the more amenities you have in a city over one, I think it increases production because your people are happier. Uh, and then you have bonus resources. So bonus uh, things like cattle and sheep give production bonuses, and then crops like rice, bananas give food bonuses. Uh, stone, I think that's a production bonus because you build a mine. Alright, we're going to build a settler next because I've learned that the faster that you settle earlier on, the better off you usually are. Oh no! No man ever wetted clay and then left it as if there would be bricks by chance and fortune. Uh, because sometimes when you start a city later in the game, it's hard to get up to speed with your other cities. So I find that it's good to settle like three to four cities as quickly as you can. Um, we're gonna move you one, and then we're gonna level you up. So units gain experience and they can, you know, progress down this tree. It usually has two paths, and you can't really mix and match. Uh, like, if I leveled up this, I couldn't then pick that one. I'd have to level up that before getting that. So you can really only go down one side. Um, there are a lot of trees. I usually do Alpine just because they can kick butt. But let's, let's try to see let's do Ranger. There are lots of woods nearby. He's kind of just going to hang out until that's ready to... Until I know irrigation. <laughs> no! Yeah, go! Go, scout! Alright, we're going to have the scout 
attack first. Take out one of them. Now we have... Alright, you're gonna skip your turn until... No, nope, you're gonna sleep until I die. And they're gonna finish him. Each combat unit has its own unique finishing move when wiping out another unit, which I also really appreciate. It just, that's all the little things that make this game good. Um, quite honestly, with melee units, I usually do both of these, because they're really good. All right, you're just gonna kind of, you're gonna move here. So we have a little bit better sight line. And then you're gonna hang out to your heels. Oh, and we'll have our settler. Uh, you're gonna move in. Oh no, there's another barbarian camp. Uh, I haven't even thought about where this person's gonna go. Uh, so as far as settling new cities, you need a fresh water source to get bonus plus three housing. So I think you start with two houses. And if you can find a coastal water, like on the ocean, you get plus one. But if you can find fresh water, like a river or a lake, it's plus three, which is really appreciated uh, because this goes up fast, the number of people. Like we already have two out of six. so. If if our city was in the middle of a field, it would already have max housing. Uh, and then another thing to keep in mind is that cities can go three hexagons away, like the border. So this city will end right there. So quite honestly, I feel like that's too close. And... I don't know. Instead of... Let's send, let's send our scout down this way. So this looks like coastline, oddly enough. Wait, are you going to attack? That happened to me last time. So I, there are some weird calculations or glitches, I swear, that don't necessarily make sense to me. Uh, we don't have a lot of culture, so let's go with culture. We're okay with food and housing for now. Honestly, I think they're just gonna hang out in the capital because I don't want they I don't want them to get kidnapped by barbarians, which can happen. Uh, barbarian horn. <gasps> Ooh, we got a pantheon, guys. Let's see. From as far as I can tell, these seem to vary a little, sieve to sieve. There's some sieves where, I don't know, there's only like six up at the top, and then there are others where you have all of these. And I don't know if that's based on, like, who gets to them first. Like, each sieve can only have one pantheon, and then the other sieves can't have it, per se. Border, ex so religious settlement, that's fun. I do appreciate that. I usually go with one of these if they're available. But Divine Spark is also really really good because great people do a lot of things especially if you're going to go for a culture victory which i think we are because um, if you have great writers and great artists they create great works that attract tourists so i think we're going to go with divine spark as our pantheon and a pantheon is kind of like a very basic not even a religion uh because later on you can be converted to various religions based on you know, what civs are trying to spread in their religion, but your pantheon always remains, regardless. Um, so if you do found your own religion, and you've converted to another one, you will lose its benefits. But someone else might have better benefits than your religion, you never know. always pick the plus five strength versus the barbarian as my first military policy because it just makes sense you know you don't really fight anyone else but barbarians in the beginning <clears throat> unless england's being a dick which has happened to me before 
I swear it was like before turn two. England, so the Queen of England, I think Elizabeth, made this massive, massive army. Oh jeez, there's a guy there running away. And then she's like, oh, let's be friends. So I gave her open borders, because th they like that a lot in the beginning. And then, so she like kind of surrounds my city, and I'm like, England, what are you doing? And then she's like, surprise war! And then she killed me. <laughs> and this is AI too. So, so yeah. AI can be a total bag of dicks to you. And I think it's like AI specific too, because historically, England is always a bag of dicks. For whatever. Thousands reason. have lived without love, not one without water. All right, so we can now have a tobacco plantation. Thank you for moving. And these change as you get to different eras. Like they'll get more modern, other than like thatch housing, like they are now. Ooh, there are spices down here. So if this is a peninsula, like I think it is, it might actually be better to settle. But is one luxury resource really worth it? That's the other question. Oh, there's another barbarian. There's two barbarians. Let's go with archery. Archers are amazing because they can attack from two squares away. Ooh, we can build that really quickly. I think I might, I might do that. Uh, so as far as planning a city goes, it took me quite a couple games to kind of figure out what the best planning methods were. Uh, and for culture victory, <clears throat> excuse me, you want to kind of build a cultural district and surround it by wonders and other districts. Because um, then it gets the most adjacency bonuses from that. So I think this is a good spot. We'll probably lose the stone and cattle when building districts, but that's fine. They're just bonus resources. Not that big a deal. Oh, they already went this turn. Alright. We're going to keep them going this way just to see what's up. Everyone else ready to go? They did. Oh, this is a tribal village. You basically take them over and get stuff. Oh, crabs. Hmm. I don't know, guys. I don't know. So we build the city here. One, two, three. We'd only get that one. And I think jungle gives you a bonus to science, adjacency to a jungle. There are a lot of cool things like that, because there are a lot of species in a jungle for scientists to study. At least that's how I view that in my mind, whether whether that's how the game uses it is another story. Oh, so we're not going to go that way. Every nation lives by exchanging. So we haven't actually... So we can build traders now, but we haven't actually found another civ or a city-state to trade with. So it's kind of like, mm, doesn't really help us, you know? Alright, we're gonna fortify into the field because we're gonna get wrecked. Alright, because this is a peninsula and is defendable, I think I am going to go in this direction. Also barbarians. So that's the thing about building wonders, is you lock up your production slot. Oh, but yeah, I can just buy... Oh, we don't know archery yet. Okay, Una, that's my face. My cat just bit me on the face because she's she's awful. She's an asshole. My smoke detector went off, so I was being nice to her and letting her sit on my lap. And now she's biting me more. 
Okay, goodbye. <clears throat> Cats, man. <sighs> the bigger bags of dicks than England. Put a that was probably a terrible joke. It's fine. I still haven't fully woken up. Wait, why can't I, um... Oh, I already did, JK. This is not the best area for traveling, I might add. There are lots of hills and forests, which all impede your movement. I guess not. Just hanging out. I like to say I practice militant mysticism. I'm absolutely sure of some things that I don't quite know. My liege, we have an envoy at our disposal. We can use the envoy to gain favor with the city-state. Becoming friendly with a city-state neighbor can be greatly beneficial to our civilization. Well, we haven't found any advisor person. That's partly my fault. Because I scouted a peninsula. Um, open border, that's good. The forces of evil become confused while your arrow is on its way to the target. Some of the quotes are a little like, hmm, I've never heard of that quote or that person before. So we built a pasture, which increases our horseback riding. It boosts us. And that, apparently. So if you look, it tells you what boosts it, and it basically by 50%. So if we made another civilization, our rating will be boosted. If we find a city on the coast, our sailing will be boosted, and so on and so forth. Uh, let's work on writing. Because actually, let's get mining out of the way. Because there are some things we will mine eventually. That's where that scout went. Did I... Uh... Oh, you know what? Do Chinese builders have extra build charges? Because usually your builder goes away after you build three things. Alright, let's try attacking. Three v three. Alright, alright. I'll take it. Let's move you. Two v two. Oh no, we're only winning by a very small margin. Let's see if we can get them to attack the scout instead. See, I don't know if I want to waste my builder on. Oh, look, that just grew. Because this is gonna be all districts, I think. It's gonna be like my city square. When you find the ascent to the highest story is by stairs, and at their side are water engines, by means of which persons, appointed expressly for the purpose, are continually employed in raising water from the Euphrates into the garden. So when you build a wonder, it does like a speed build, which is wonderful. It doesn't do it in multiplayer, and like probably my first 10 games of this were in multiplayer, because my friend Val and I play everything together. When you find yourself in a hole, quit digging. And these quotes change, some of them do, because a lot of times this is like something about a, a coal miner's wife. So that's also really appreciated. This barbarian needs to get out of here. 
Wait, did that barbarian run away? It did. Whoa. That happens to me a lot. It'll jump to the next unit to move, and I'll be trying to move a different unit, and then I accidentally move that one. Yeah, go scout. Oh, hi, village. What up? So I think we're going to settle right here, and then this will be like our district D area. Let's do writing next, because science is wonderful. So because we picked the great person bonus, where this is basically increases the amount of great person points you get per turn, so it's very useful to have. And only, you know, whoever builds it first keeps it. So there's that as well. So, because I'm planning on putting my cultural center here, I want to surround it by another wonder. So I'm going to spend the gold to buy one of these spots. And we're going to put it there. Now the past three games where I've tried to build the Oracle of Delphine, someone built it the turn before I was going to complete it. But, one of China's perks is that I can throw a builder at that and have it build it fast, or have it build faster. I speak real eloquent, guys, I swear. See what I mean? I could have accidentally moved that guy. Uh, alright. Oh, we have a builder. Let's go throw him at that. Let's take your current turn. I'm still not entirely sure exactly where that city's gonna go. Harald Sigurðarsson stendur fyrir þér. Aldrei var víking slík landsnjö lagar. Ha 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 So many rolling of the R's. Would you like to visit our nearby city and sample our hospitality? So we got a 50% writing boost because we met another sieve. So we have recently we have gained advanced knowledge in city planning. Creating districts in our cities can be much more powerful and lucrative than simple improvements like farms and mines. So that was our first district. Writing means sharing. It's part of the human condition to want to share things. Thoughts, ideas, opinions. And our first district is the campus. So basically for each uh, I don't know, stat, there's a district. The campus is for science. You have a theater district for culture, a religious site for religion, commerce district for money, and then I think an industrial district for production, as well as an encampment, which lets you build better and quicker units. Barbarians are on there. So that's not going to happen. He's going to run back to the capital so he doesn't get captured. And then I think we're just going to flat out buy an archer. Because I want to keep researching. When you buy a unit, you can't use them that turn. But still, it's, it's totally worth it. Oh, that's the Great Wall. Bonus to gold if adjacent to other segments. Additional culture and tourism as you advance through the technology tree for adjacent segments. So you just get one segment for... I don't know. I just assume you can build however many you wanted. Um... We'll research astrology, mainly because you can't build a harbor without, you know, being able to navigate via stars. But we might as well also have a little bit of religion. Oh, your delegation is most welcome. 
So he sent traders with gifts of a rune stones. They're powerful, the stones, not the traders. <laughs> because he's a Viking and they're all about runes. <laughs> like I said, all the little things are very appreciated. Oh, damn it. Builder, you're gonna hide. Timing. So I think I think that might be the spot. So let's count. So if I settle here, one, two, three, I'll be able to get this fish. Be able to get that fish. Uh, one, two, one, two, three. I'll be able to get both crabs, the dye, the bananas. One, two, three, and the deer. I will see how it's gray though. I won't start with like hardly, or I'll start with hardly any housing. So that can be bypassed via building an aqueduct. I don't know if I can build an aqueduct to the ocean though. Even that's plus one. We're gonna do it. We'll do it next turn because I can't this turn. Uh, well, we're gonna go get the game and be like, you know, I know better strategically this makes more sense. Even though it probably doesn't. Holy barbarian. Look back over the past with its changing empires that rose and fell. And you can foresee the future too. Uh, let's see. Production towards settlers, reduced cost of purchasing tile. Let's look at our policies. We have probably quite a few new ones. So this one I don't really care about. Uh, we are going to try to settle more areas. And that's plus 50%. That's really good. But we're going to keep this one, because we're about to get attacked by a crap ton of barbarians. Which is what happens when you don't murder the scouts. <gasps> oh, look. So, theater square next. We definitely want that one. Taiwan. Or Taiyuan. Also, please forgive me, I'm not, probably not going to pronounce a lot of the city names correctly. Because unfortunately, I'm not a terribly cultured individual. Uh, you're just gonna hang out there and heal. Because I'm afraid if you try to go by, you're just gonna die. Almost dead. Alright, let's risk it. I really want to build that before. Oh, there's a barbarian on it. I swear the game knows. Uh, so what is most beneficial? Probably a builder. So we can get that luxury resource. almost at max housing because I built it so far away and if you look at it's pretty tiny looking we need to find some other cities though so we can establish some trade roads They know. I don't believe in astrology. I'm a Sagittarius, and we're skeptical. That's one of my favorite quotes. Um, let's go for an encampment next. And iron. So, what I haven't explained is that on the technology tree, 
they'll see new resources, like iron. Uh, what's another one? I think niters, really, it's like gunpowder. So those won't actually appear anywhere on the map until you research them, because you don't know how to identify them. So it's really hard to plan. Uh, and that includes like the late game resources like uranium and stuff like that. So like there could be uranium, the only uranium in the entire world could be in a Russia city. And you have no way of knowing until after you research it. So it makes it really interesting in the late game when that happens. Because then Russia will have a monopoly on nuclear technology. And there's nothing you can do about it, you know? Oh look, this is more ocean. Are we on an island, guys? That makes things kind of interesting. Alright, you're gonna skip your turn. Because I swear to god, we're gonna boost this stupid oracle thing. Come on, slingers. They're just holding out there. Alright, you're dead. Just gonna hang out. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> oh, there's a scout over there. I got I'm also interested in creating a lasting legacy, because bronze will last for thousands of years. The poets have been mysteriously silent on the subject of cheese. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, guys, we just entered the classical era, so I think that's a good a good spot to pause uh, until next time. So once again, my name is Russell Tussle, and this was part one of Civilization VI as China. Uh, I've been playing this game obsessively, and I probably will continue to do so. So definitely expect more of this playthrough as well as other civs, because it's like there's so many ways you can play and win this game. It's so much, so much fun. It's so much fun, I can't even properly articulate words to express how fun it is. Anyway... Please like and subscribe below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Thanks for watching!